Okay, so before this video gets started, I just want to clarify a few things. First of all, I think Pokemon Unite is a decent game, and I played a couple of others before. Second of all, I know I'm against the CPU, and the CPU is awful. So obviously these matches I'm gonna win. And third, I'm practicing Machamp at the end of the video because I haven't played Machamp before. I wonder if I want to get Machamp. But here's Pokemon Unite, like complaints, like pros and cons from a tank's perspective. For the record, I mostly mean slow bro. However, the reason for that is because no one else picks a tank on my team, for whatever reason. Enemy team will always have a tank, but my team will not, so I have to take the role of tank. First complaint is the most obvious one, Zapdos. Yeah, you guys thought I was going to say pay to win, weren't you? I don't think the game is pay to win, personally. I think that, like, I got to level 20 items just playing the game normally. I've been logging on each day, playing a ranked game, and doing some quick battles and stuff. Making sure that I get the daily loggers and stuff. I don't think the game is pay to win. I think that's people just blowing it way out of proportion. But back to the topic of Zapdos. Zapdos is designed horribly. I, like, Zapdos is basically a full enemy team Rotom. But here's the thing. It's like the team the KOs Zapdos. Guess the thing. There's so many games where my team have been attacking Zapdos at the last second, the enemy team just stole it at the last second. I think that should be changed. That's the first thing I think they should change about the game. Is that either the losing team guess like like the losing team has Zapdos spawn in their base or something so that they can KO it without the enemy team stealing it? Or is or Zapdos gives the team the K like not the team to KO but the team that did the most damage to full fame. Because Zapdos is supposed to be KO'd by teams, but it doesn't matter. At the last second, some random Zet or Gengar, Cinderace, or whoever from the NB team, they say, I'm just going to jump in there and get a last second KO so you guys lose. It's literally the worst thing. Zapdos should be based on who does most damage. Like, I don't know. Another way you could change Zapdos is perhaps make it set where Zapdos is KO'd. It puts timers on both team spaces, but the team that did more damage gets more time. That way, both teams have a chance to win at the very least. Because I'll be honest, there was one game where I stole Zapdos at the last second and my team won because of it. And it's just awful because that shouldn't be the case. Zapdos should be based on who's done the most damage just in general. Now, second complaint about the game. Obviously some characters. Stornax particularly, okay? Yes, I'm speaking from a tank's perspective as a slow bro. Stornax is a way better tank. Stornax has more health, can stun enemies, can also use Protect to push them. I think Protect should be changed. Immensely. How so? I feel like when Protect pushes someone, the Protect gets cancelled and needs a longer cooldown. Cause, uh, like Stornax can just sit in one place and be like, oh, I'm going to push you while my teammates score goals. It's really annoying. The most Slowbro has been able to stop enemies from scoring goals. And Storax can just stop people from getting goals in general by pushing them. Or he can faint. He can help his teammates score goals. And, you know, stunning as Storax does a ton of damage. Plus, I think when Storax is in West, Storax actually have less defense. Because West, at the start of the game, is... Overpowered is all. Like, seriously. Slowbro gets like 10 HP, essentially. I know it's more than that, but you can see the difference in their healing tactics. Um, let's see. Another thing to sort of complain about, really, is specific teammates. I don't know why, but for, uh, for, but for the enemy team, when they have Pokemon such as Cinderace, Pikachu, Zerowara, all that, they're really good. Like they're actually brilliant at the game. But when I have a Cinderace, what usually happens is they follow me, we get an enemy to like half health, the Cinderace walks after that enemy to try and KO them, and then they get teamed up on by two people and die, and I'm left defending the goal by myself. And it's the same for Zero Wars. I know there's a whole thing in the game called Jungle, I don't know the exact ones, but my guess is it's 
going to the center and using the grass to sneak up on opponents and flank them. The enemy team does it, my team never does it. Like seriously, I've seen so many Zer Wars get killed. And here's the thing, as a tank, I have to sit there and help you guys, but they don't retweet. Like they literally just don't retweet. If they got behind me, I could use Surf and Amnesia so they could retweet to the goal and get healed. Or they could attack from behind me. I've tried that so many times, but the teammates literally just one in front of me and say, I sacrificed myself to the Shadow Well, essentially. And it's one of the most annoying things. Like, as a tank, I'm supposed to help you guys. But you guys aren't giving me opportunities to help you. And here's another thing for a tank, okay? In this video, I do get MVP on my team. Of course, I'm against the AI, though, so that doesn't really matter. But as tanks, we don't want to be MVPs. But for some reason, our teammates ignore us when we're trying to score goals. I have to use a gold getter on Slowbro. Because usually, my teammates score goals and one away. And when I'm trying to score goals, the enemy team jumps in and then KO me in like two seconds. The game is designed so that you're supposed to score goals. But my team will help me score goals. They score goals and like, yeah, I'm going to want a way to be MVP. I don't want to be MVP. I absolutely do not. I just want to wake up in the game. I've been stuck in Ultra for like the past week. I was on Ultra 2 a full week ago. I went down to Great and had to get back to Ultra 1 and I'm on 2 Crystal. Actually, I'm on 1 Crystal for Ultra because I lost a ranked game this morning because of really stupid teammates. So yeah, that's another thing. But as a tank, well no, for um, anyone else playing the game, if your team has a tank, think of them as backup to you but also be backup to them. Because they can't win a fight on their own. Well, they can. I literally had a couple games where I literally defended the goal from like five people at once. And it survived until the end of it. Or at least got supposed to KO'd and then someone else came over and finished with them off. But you need to work together with your tank. Another thing. If you see a slow bro on your team. Or just any tank. Okay? And if you're the center player, you need to help both lanes. If you're a jungler, you can't just decide, I'm just going to attack bottom lane to try and score goals. Okay? If you score a goal in the bottom lane, that's all fine. And if you destroy the goal, that's great. But when you do that, go to the top lane. Then you can help your tank. Because the tank can help taking care of the first couple goals. It's the goals after that that the tank struggles with because the tank has to focus on keeping their goals safe. Like, seriously. Now, let's see. I'm going to talk about some other teammates that basically just sacrifice themselves to the enemies. It used to be Charizards. I haven't seen many Charizards do that at ranked, or I haven't seen many Charizards in ranked since they did the patch with Gengar. But I've seen so many Charizards just chase people. I've seen so many Cinderaces chase people and then get KO'd as well. Also, see Ninetales do that. Ninetales is a zoning character. Ninetales is supposed to get enemies weakened, summon a wall, and then trap that enemy to KO them, same as Crustle. But, if, like, here's a tip for Pokemon Unite. If you're basically an attacker, like Cinderace, Charizard, Zero, or Gengar, like if you're anything but a tank, don't chase the enemy when they start running away if they have half health. And when you do chase that person, because I know some people aren't going to listen, when some pe when you do chase those people, think for a second. No, actually think, because chances are they have a teammate running towards them now to help them. Or there's someone waiting in the grass to flank you. So before you chase that person, just think, should I retreat or chase after them and get KO'd? Because that's the honest truth. But yeah, Pokemon Night to me, is a good game, but I barely had chances to play other characters. I played like one game as so many characters, a couple games as Gengar when the teammates never chose Gengar, but I'm pretty sure I have like a hundred plus games now as Slowbro because the team that I'm always on never picks tank. 
I don't know if it's based on like purple versus orange. Like I don't know. Maybe orange had a whole ton of smart people joining it. But there's just so many problems with the game that do need fixed, and there's so many things teammates need to do in order to think. Now, yes, you could say, "Oh, you're just being greedy," and these are things that you find every yes to point in this video. I would talk about what it's like to play a jungler like Zerwolver or Ducario, stuff like that. But I can't because I'm always stuck picking a tank. And why do you think I recorded the footage against the CPU? Because I wanted to play other characters. Yes, I showed Slowbro, but that's to bring my point across and I practiced Machamp a little bit because I haven't played Machamp. But honestly, I think what's going to happen is when I get enough coins, I'm going to get Snorlax and I'm going to start decimating. But I do think Snorlax needs a little bit of a nerf. I don't think anyone from Pokemon Unite is going to watch this, but Snorlax is protect particularly because it really does need to stop. Like, just pushing the opponents and stunning them is a bit too much. Like, you push them and stun them, and you stun them enough so you can push them again. That shouldn't be the case. What it should be is that when Protect pushes and stuns someone, it can hit multiple people at once, but if it hits anyone at all and pushes them, it stops. Or Snorlax loses a lot of defense or can't use Protect for like a full minute. It needs a huge cooldown or something. But yeah, you guys do see my name in the video. I guess you guys can add me if you want to. But I probably won't add back if I'm being honest. Because usually on Pokemon Night, I just sign in, play one ranked game, and then two quick matches. And then if I need to, then like I do daily challenges basically. But I hope you guys do sort of enjoy this video. And yes, I already know that fame. We don't be playing against the CPU, but if I go to ranked game, then chances are that I would just rage constantly. Oh, here's another thing now. If you go AFK, then don't play the game, okay? I've seen so many people search for lobbies, not ready up until the last second, that they don't ready up picking a Pokemon until the last second. Oh, and when the game starts, they just hit the AFK. And one other thing, there is a strange sort of lag in the game. You can see it during the video where I'm just sort of running around at the start, sort of meandering. That's a strange lag that I've been experiencing. So I think that needs to be up there soon. That on my internet is just terrible. But, yeah. That's it for the video, and I will see you guys. Well, I will see you guys for a while until Majora's Mask is finished. <laughs> but I'll see you guys then.